Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, just imagine the scene. You're in Anthony Yard's backyard. The United Kingdom is a country that allows sports betting. You have a lot of people in the crowd who know that Anthony Yard is fighting a 38-year-old. And that Yard only has to be right once. He only has to land one big shot to win the fight. They also know that Yard is a big-time underdog according to the betting odds. So there's a chance to make a lot of money on this fight, and I mean a lot of money on this fight compared to other fights, if Yard can just deliver. And of course they know that pound for pound, and this continues to be true, Anthony Yard is one of the hardest punchers in the sport. So people are buzzing. The fight starts. Yard comes out. Now, I want to freeze it right here. Just understand that at the time of the stoppage by Baturbiev, later in the fight, Anthony Yard is ahead on two of the three judges' scorecards. So Yard does a lot right. Right? Yard comes out. He's winning rounds. Understand, he does better against Baturbiev than a number of guys, including Baturbiev's last opponent, Joe Smith. Yard comes out feeding off the crowd. Yard's up on his toes. Yard shooting a jab. Yard is moving side to side. Now, before I go further, I need for people to understand that I appreciate Yard's effort. Right now, while we here in this corner of YouTube expected Baturbiev to win by KO, I want to say I appreciated what Yard did. But what I also want people to do is to consider the styles and to get past the moment and to ask themselves whether Yard could have done better. Were there things that he did that didn't play well against Baturbiev. In fact, hurt him against Baturbiev. So that first round where Yard comes out looking like Muhammad Ali, right, jumping around, he's in against a big-time puncher, a guy with a punch on par with, let's say, Sonny Liston. Right? Understand, Arthur Baturbiev has not, as a pro, been forced to go the distance. You count his number of fights, that's his number of KOs. That streak is intact after this fight. So here you have Yard out. He's pumping a jab. He's moving a lot. Now I watch the American feed. It was on ESPN+. Plus. Understand, ESPN Plus sometimes has these fights on demand after the fight has taken place. Right now, I saw the fight live as it happened on ESPN Plus, but I want to encourage people to go back to the ESPN Plus feed and to listen to an argument between two Hall of Famers covering the fight. One is Timothy Bradley. He's caught up in the scene. He loves what Anthony Yard is doing. The other guy is Andre Ward. Right, folks? I agree with Andre Ward. He saw the same fight I saw. Understand, this is why we all watch boxing. You're in a row of people watching a fight, 
after the round ends, you say, oh, you know, this guy is blowing it. And the other people will look at you puzzled. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes you're right. Andre Ward did not like, from early, Anthony Yard's strategy. Nor did I. Let's talk about how styles, different styles, might have led to a different outcome because the fight here is on the table. Anthony Yard comes out. He is active. The fans want to see an upset. Understand, during this fight, when Yard would land a big punch, and he landed a few, you could see the crowd buzzing. They thought, this is the moment. Right? The setup was perfect for an upset. But here's the problem. And I'm going to name old-time fighters because they have distinctive styles. And you can, in this era, look up the fights on YouTube. In other words, because of YouTube on-demand video, boxing has become timeless. Gone are the days when some old-timer would be talking about, you know, Jose Torres or, you know, Ray Robinson and you Archie Moore. And you'd be listening to them and you would say, gee, was Archie Moore that good? And no one had films. VCRs weren't even invented. This is no longer the 1970s, folks. Now someone names Archie Moore, talks about his fight against Yvonne Durrell. You can look it up. Right? My dad used to talk about Joe Lewis. When a Joe Lewis fight finally came on TV and I was old enough to appreciate it, I remember thinking, man, Joe can't move. How would Joe last against Ali? Right? So here, just to understand, Yard comes out, the crowd is behind him, he is active. Right? The crowd's behind him and he's letting the crowd know, I feel you. He's bouncing around and it's shocking if you watch yard fights. Right? He comes out, he's bouncing around behind a jab. He's moving a lot laterally. Again, he looks like Ali against Sonny Liston. Here's the catch. Was he fighting Sonny Liston? Or was he fighting Joe Fraser? In the pre-fight video for this fight, I was talking about the similarities between Joe Fraser, who Ali could not move away from, and Arthur Perturbiev. Right? Anthony Yard's message in the first two rounds is, Arthur, you're not going to be able to find me. Right? I'm not coming in the pocket. You're going to have to come look for me behind my jab and movement. Now that worked for, uh, for Ali against Sonny Liston because Sonny Liston, a master in the pocket, didn't have the foot speed to keep up with Ali. But understand, a Joe Fraser did. Right? You need to know the fighters. Arthur Perturbiev, I know he's 38. I know he's measured, right? But understand, he is quick off his feet. Quick off his feet. This is like watching an NBA game, and you notice the guy's a leaper, right? The guy can just get up off his feet, right? It's the difference between Jordan, very quick off his feet, and LeBron, great athlete but not as quick off his feet, right? Arthur Perturbiev can move. Arthur Perturbiev is quick off his feet. Arthur Perturbiev is very two-handed, very two-handed, and Arthur Perturbiev just has a gift that Joe Fraser has. He knows how to get inside. I think it's because the angles of his punches and his power Right? Keep guys a little bit on their back foot. And Baturbiev, who can move his head, is able to 
slip and get inside. But Turbiev doesn't clinch a lot. This is a guy who moves, and when he gets inside, he's smooth about it. He comes up, and he comes over a little bit to the side, whether it's the right or the left. So I would argue, and disagree with me, anything I say, in the comment section of this video, I would argue that Anthony Yard is not fighting a Sonny Liston. Right? And for the record, I consider Liston to be one of the best heavyweights I've ever seen. Right? Look at his fight against Cleveland Williams, which took place in the pocket. Right? But Yard's not fighting Sonny Liston. He's fighting Joe Fraser. Understand, if you look at the first Ali Fraser fight, Joe Fraser gets Ali up on the ropes, folks, in the first round. Right, this is the guy who has the timing down, has rhythm on his side. Right, but Tarbiev knows the fight's rhythm. He knows when to step into the pocket. He knows how to back you up. He's not going to watch you dance around him. As you dance, he's going to be cutting off the ring. So, let's talk about which fight you saw. Did you see a fight where Yard, again, who's ahead at the time of the stoppage, is skillfully out there moving, right? Shooting a jab, being active in front of his home crowd, early, banking rounds, letting his opponent know, hey, I have boxing skills. Is that the fight you saw? Or did you see the fight Andre Ward saw? And understand, Ward's alone in the booth, right? The other guys, the other guys um, disagree with him. The fight Andre Ward saw is a wasted energy fight. If you're fighting Arthur Baturbiev, you know Baturbiev is going to be able to create his own pocket. This is what foot speed does. Bertaria is going to be able to create his own pocket. He's going to be able to back up Anthony Yard. Yard's going to have to deal with him. A pocket is going to form. So the question is, what's Yard's construct in the pocket? The answer to that question, not the sticking and moving early on and playing to the crowd and being active, right? The question's not Yard's lateral movement and behind a jab and energy. No, the question is when a pocket forms, how is Yard going to defend himself? And is Yard here for just a one-punch knockout? Or does Yard actually have a plan to systematically wear down and decrease 38-year-old Arthur Perturbiev? Right, well, let's just say the focus should have been on the angles in the pocket. Now, let me pause here. People think it's a joke when you talk about experience and when you talk about defense and stuff like that, right? Every young guy thinks their first day in boxing that they're going to be able to blow out people. I'm watching young heavyweights right now. Let me be critical, right? Let me be critical. Big baby. Anderson, for example. I'm watching these young heavyweights, and they have an A-level right hand or something like that. And I'm wondering, does the guy understand that against some KG vets, he's going to be at a hand speed disadvantage? Not only that, KG vets are going to create a pocket. Some KG vet is going to be in front of him throwing big punches. 
that vet might be gifted in terms of hand speed like Andy Ruiz, or that vet might be a southpaw who's cagey and who has defensive skills, Luis Ortiz. And you wonder if young guys understand they have to think about what happens when a pocket forms. What's the game plan then? How are you going to stop Baturbiev's hooks to the side of your head? How are you going to diminish Baturbiev? Well, here I'm going to name another great. You've heard me mention Joe Fraser. You've heard me mention Ali. You've heard me mention Liston. Let's name another great. If he is before your time, I encourage fans to look him up. His name is Pernell Whitaker. The fight to look at is Purnell against Oscar De La Hoya. That's a fight they tell us Purnell lost. I'll agree, Purnell should have thrown more punches. But understand, defensive fighters think differently than everyone else. Okay, Floyd Mayweather knows this. Defensive fighters from early, from early, are in the ring, and they're thinking about the angles. They're stopping you from throwing punches before you even think about throwing the punch. So a Purnell, and he was a southpaw, right? A Purnell would be in the pocket and would know in the De La Hoya fight, De La Hoya, who was really a southpaw fighting orthodox, his big punch was a left hook. Right, thrown at a 45 degree angle. Understand, and you can look on the film footage. Purnell in the pocket is bent at the waist. He has his right shoulder, again, he's a southpaw, between himself and De La Hoya. It's a side profile. So De La Hoya already can't hit Purnell on the side of his body that's away from De La Hoya. And as De La Hoya throws the left hook, which Purnell knows is coming, Purnell Whitaker is bent in such a way that he doesn't even need to put a hand up. He's ducking under the punch. In other words, the great defensive fighters, Floyd Mayweather, righty, has a shoulder between him and his opponent. The opponent, if the opponent's two-handed, the opponent's going to realize, I can't hit this side of Mayweather's body because Mayweather has it turned away from me. Understand, a Mayweather also has, and if you want to see a current fighter with this construct, Canelo. A Mayweather also has while he's in a defensive shell, right? While he has his head tucked, while he is bent, he has an explosive left hook that he's going to punish you with. Now, no surprise here, a pocket forms in the yard Baturbia fight. No surprise here. Baturbiev is throwing heavy-duty headshots with both hands. Right now, that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Here's where I was let down by Anthony Yard. In a fight, Yard fought well, right? But here's the difference between winning and losing. If Baturbiev is coming in and he's throwing right hooks up top, if he's headhunting on Anthony Yard, right, one way to get rid of a guy, to discourage a guy from throwing right hooks is to hit him with body shots to the right side of his body. Then I come up and I'm nervous. First of all, your head should be hidden. I should only get a side view of you, so the space I can hit you with is diminished. Understand, it's illegal for me to punch you in the back of your head. So I should be seeing a lot of the back of your head. 
shouldn't I? Then, Yard should have thought to himself, I'm a great short puncher. I'm an excellent body puncher. I need to be hitting this guy in the body from the opening rounds. He's 38. I want him to come up and to think, man, my body's sore. I need my right hand to cover myself, to protect my body. I can't come in recklessly throwing high right hands. And let's face it, Baturbiev uses his body for leverage. He likes to throw that right hand from up top and then lean his body into it and bring it down on you. Look at the knockout here in this fight. That's the punch he throws. Discourage him from throwing that high right by taking out the right side of his body. Shouldn't Yard have been, Yard's a righty, looking to his right, shouldn't his left shoulder have been, always, between him and Baturbiev? Shouldn't Yard, facing his right, have had his right hand like this, covering his face, his head tucked low, so his right hand is being used to block shots to the side of his head, right? But Turby is a headhunter. And shouldn't Yard's free left hand have been working over the body of Arthur Baturbiev. Folks, that's not the fight I saw. Go to the CompuBox numbers. Yard does land 31 body shots. Bravo. Only 31 body shots? Didn't Yard look at the films of Alexander Usyk against... Baturbiev didn't Yard realize that Usyk, admittedly a lefty, was landing left hands to the right side of Baturbiev's body? Shouldn't Yard have been in a defensive shell, side profile, in front of Baturbiev, throwing hard shots to Baturbiev's body? Isn't that the fight that should have happened? And then, of course, if Paterbiev started covering up that part of his body, the right side of his body, shouldn't Yard have then turned the punch over, brought it up, and started throwing left hooks up top? You remember the left hook from Canelo that ended the Kovalev fight? You remember Floyd Mayweather just working over Diego Corrales with left hooks while being defensive. Folks, you know a pocket is going to form. But Tarbiev is as aggressive as Joe Fraser. You remember the Foreman fight. Think about it. Who charges in against George Foreman in his prime? The answer was Joe Fraser. So Foreman in that fight literally has to push Joe Fraser away from him. You understand with foot speed, like Baturbiev's foot speed. There's going to be a moment where you're in the pocket. You cannot be parallel to him. A guy with two-handed power who is throwing hooks up top. You can't be parallel to him. You need a side profile to take away one of his arms. You need to give him something to think about Offensively, you need to land big shots to his body. Your game plan can't be to get a one-punch KO, to get some big shot that diminishes him. You need to chop him down, make him pay for his aggressiveness. Instead, in a gallant fight, Right? Gallant fight. Slugger Yard at times has his back up on the ropes. His shoulders are parallel to Baturbiev's shoulders. Baturbiev's landing right hands, Baturbiev's landing left hands. 
understand the rhythm Perturbiev has. At one point in the fight, I counted five straight right hands that Perturbiev threw. Right, Perturbiev knew he had a guy who, if he got parallel to him, and Perturbiev, I say parallel, Perturbiev is always a little bit off at the side a little bit. Right, Perturbiev knew that a pocket was going to form and he was going to have a guy parallel to him who was not defensively blessed, who thought they were trading punches, but who wasn't putting in the work to diminish Perturbiev to the body. Right, so what you had was Perturbiev reading a less experienced, younger opponent coming in and realizing, okay, this guy is parallel to me. He's over by the ropes, exactly where I want him. Whatever the lateral movement was in the first round, it was gone by round five, wasn't it? Right, so here's Yard trying to trade with Arthur Perturbiev. Perturbiev, of course, is landing shots and has his choice of right hand or left hand. Yard is not Pernell Whitaker, while Pernell Whitaker, fighting greats, knew, okay, I have neutralized Oscar's left hook. Right? While, while Pernell could know that, because his stance and stuff, this is how defensive guys think. His defensive construct is stuff where he knows this guy's going to have a hard time finding my head. I have it tucked. I'm bending at the waist, so when this guy starts to throw his left hook, I'm going to bend and roll and take the sting out the punch. Right? Oscar is left with, and Oscar had hand speed. Oscar's left with a right hand that doesn't have the power to knock me out. I'll take my chances. That's how a defensive guy thinks. Anthony Yard, a slugger, right, has lived off offense, not defense. Anthony Yard, by contrast, is there, and I'm sure he was overwhelmed. Here is Baturbiev, power in both hands, right, and Yard is parallel to him. Baturbiev is coming in, he's throwing punches here, very light on his feet. He can just, you know, looks like he's ice skating. Just move to the other side. He's throwing left hands, hooks, right? So Yard thinks, okay, this is a shootout. Yard does well enough to be leading on the judges' cards. But let's just say there wasn't enough of a method to the madness. You weren't there for round six thinking Yard's really invested in the body. Right? You didn't, you didn't get that feeling. Right? The structure's not there. There's no time in this fight where you think, wow, Yard has figured out how to block Baturbiev's right hand. Folks, there's, there's no time in the fight where you think Yard really has figured out how to block Baturbiev's left hand. You're facing an offensively blessed fighter against whom no one has gone the distance. And when you look at Baturbiev's record, it's not that many fights. You realize he's fighting Joe Smith, Grosdick, you know, Marcus Brown. He's, he's fighting the elites at cruiserweight, right? They're in talks trying to get a Bevel fight right now. And here is Baturbiev knocking all these guys out. And you mean to tell me you're in the middle of a fight against Anthony Yard and Yard hasn't figured out how to stop any Baturbiev punch and hasn't figured out that he needs to work over Baturbiev's body because Baturbiev's upper body like it was with Joe Fraser, and Joe Fraser was a Bob and Weaver. Baturbiev's upper body is such that Baturbiev is hard to hit. There are moments in this fight where Baturbiev does get hit with some yard shots, 
right? But Turbiev at one point is naked, has his hands down, gets hit with a headshot. Right? There are oohs and ahs during the fight. But understand it's happenstance. Yard hasn't targeted parts of Baturbiev like Usyk did. So in my favorites folder right now, I want you to look at the fight that Usyk had against Baturbiev when Baturbiev was the number one ranked heavyweight in amateurs. Right, And again, heavyweight means something different in amateurs because you have a super heavyweight division. But understand, after a lot of lateral movement in the first round, in the second round, Usyk understood, I need to be systematic. I need to start to throw a punch that prevents this guy from bum-rushing the pocket. So he starts systematically throwing straight left hands. Right? Anthony Yard is not that level of mid-fight adjuster. Right? Andre Ward on the telecast. And Andre Ward was a technician's technician. Right? I watched Ward for years and I didn't know if he was righty or lefty. That's how good he was. Andre Ward on the American telecast is pleading, pleading with, uh, with Yard to throw body shots, right? Ward sees that Yard's movement and all that early is ineffective, right? It's, it's not sustainable. He's in against a guy with a 100% KO percentage, right? So yard strategy in the first two rounds is like Marvin Hagler coming out left-handed against Ray Leonard, right? You understand this is temporary. It's not sustainable. He's not going to be able to keep this going. So then the pocket forms and Ward on the telecast is in essence saying, hey, bank some body shots, Right, you know, <laughs> you know, Baturbiev is coming to knock you out. You know he's going to be in the pocket. Right, fire back in a way where you're building something. And here is Anthony Yard, a blessed puncher, a great short puncher. And he never figures out to have his left shoulder between himself and Baturbiev and to throw body shots, right? Folks, I'm, I'm just telling you, look at Canelo against Rocky Fielding, right? You'll notice Canelo comes over, he's banking body shots, right? Canelo needs to make sure that if this fight makes it to the middle and later rounds, his opponent is diminished. Right? I'm telling you, after you feel a few Canelo left hooks to the body, you're in no rush to bum rush him. Right? Why didn't that happen in this fight? When Anthony Yard is up against the ropes, what's his defensive construct? What's his game plan to neutralize at least part of Baturbiev's attack? Tell us in the comment section of this video. I believe Anthony Yard is too excited, gets caught up in the moment. He watched the Usyk first round and sees Usyk using lateral movement to thwart Baturbiev, who's coming forward. I'm not sure if Yard saw the second round, which is the big round to me, where Usyk's taller fighter starts bending and throwing straight lefts to Baturbiev's body slows him down, is banking shots. That's an amateur fight, by the way, where they didn't have all the rounds to work with. You're a puncher here. Don't you want your energy to be targeted? Let me name another old-time name, Ken Norton. Right now, I know Kenny got knocked out, some dramatic knockouts. Ernie Shaver stops him. Jerry Cooney stops him. Okay, fine. But what I want people to realize is... Kenny Norton 
would be at the side, would have his hand covering his chin. Right? Kenny understood a pocket's going to form. Kenny, Kenny understood. Right? I need to have a hand free so I can throw punches out of a defensive construct once the pocket forms. Now, it didn't always work out for Kenny. George Foreman KOs him. Right? But an argument can be made that Kenny, who broke Ali's jaw, Kenny, who had a punch, who fought Ali three times, and folks, old timers debate who actually won the fights. Right? Kenny was effective. Right? Anthony Yard here is ad libbing when he should have been pre planned. His. He should never be parallel in front of Baturbiev, right? Is there a worse fighter in boxing to be parallel and have your back up against the ropes, to have your shoulders literally match the other guy's shoulders? Baturbiev's a little off at the side, but it's like this. And to have your back up against the ropes and to not bank body shots. Right, so... In a fight that was competitive, you understood that the 38-year-old was not diminished, right? At one point, Andre Ward, Ward had a great night from the booth. At one point, Andre Ward pointed out to you, during an exchange between the fighters, that Baturbiev was resting during the exchange. In other words, Baturbiev never really gets out of his comfort zone. Right? Even the exchanges, they weren't the type of exchanges where Baturbi is thinking, man, this guy's worked over my ribcage with that jab. Right? You know, I'm out here in the middle of the ring with Anthony Yard, and I need to protect my side. Right? No, it's, it's ad hoc. In other words, Anthony Yard, you know, hasn't been structured enough to where... Baturbiev has to stay vigilant when they're in the middle of the ring. Right? Baturbiev knows. I'm going to back this guy up. Baturbiev's picking his entry points. Right? So the judges' scorecards are what they are. They had Yard ahead at the time of the stoppage. I thought Yard's corner saw the same fight that I saw and that Andre Ward saw. I applaud them for stopping the fight. It's a little bit jarring when Yard gets up off the canvas and Yard, you know, the ref's trying to talk to him and Yard turns his back to the ref and Yard is looking off at his corner, looking dazed and confused. You understood the fight was over because you knew Baturbiev was still in great shape. He hadn't been diminished. This wasn't a guy who had his power taken away because of body shots. Yard wasn't landing shots with any regularity. You didn't look at the fight and think, oh, there's another right hand by Anthony Yard. He never set up punches where you could point to the punch and say, that's highly effective. Right? So I'll just say this. In a few more fights, maybe Yard gets there. I thought Yard was lost against Kovalev. I thought Yard was lost against Arthur. And then Yard came back, beat Arthur in the rematch, right? Yard surprised me with his boxing skills early in this fight. Right? But he's not Purnell. He wasn't fighting Sonny Liston. He was fighting Joe Fraser. Baturbiev came in the pocket. Baturbiev is two-handed, unlike Joe, who was really a big left hook. Baturbiev's two-handed. Baturbiev had his choices when he came in the pocket, and he knew the guy he was fighting was not focusing on his body. That's the fight I saw. Let me know the fight you saw in the comment section of this YouTube video.
as we suspected, the favorite won by stoppage. I give Yard credit on the effort. Let's hope he looks at the film and asks himself questions like, why didn't I go to the body more? Right? What am I doing parallel to him? Why isn't my left shoulder between the two of us? Why isn't my head more tucked? Why is my head there to get hit against a headhunter? Why didn't I take away his right hand? Why didn't I take away his left hand? Maybe Yard needs to ask himself a further question. How would I take away his right hand? Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.